it appears to be yet another video. Quick intro for the intro. California trip, had the issues with the breathing stuff, kind of recovering from that. You're going to notice there's a lot of stuff going on in this video. I had to mentally decide, well, technically I should probably stay here and do nothing and let my lungs get better from all the stuff. Or I could go hang out with some friends that I almost never get to see. Well, not nearly as often as I used to. So I figured sometimes mentally sitting in here, I mean, I did finally pull the, um, I did pull one of the aluminum bubble wrap things off a window. So I've got some light in here now, but I think mentally it was better for me to go hang out with people, even if I'm not really doing anything than just sitting here by myself, especially knowing that they're in town. Um, so anyways, just a thought to consider sometimes. Well, yes, sometimes you do need to sit and do nothing. Sometimes you can get away with not doing it and it's better to take advantage of the time that you have and kind of enjoy it a little bit more, even if it slows the recovery process slightly. I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, but just my thoughts on the subject. Um, okay, let's get into the intro of the video now. All right, apparently it's already Tuesday. Time flies like crazy. Today, working on a few random things. I'm still kind of, it's an interesting neighborhood. I'm still kind of recovering from the trip to California with the breathing machine weirdness and whatnot, but I think I'm back to about 70%, so we'll call that good. A friend's been in town for the last week or so working on getting this uh, big truck that we built years ago ready to tow back out to his new place in Idaho. So I'm gonna give him, giving him a hand helping out with that. We're trying to fit this thing that has 53 inch tires on it onto a trailer and tow it like 450 miles or something. So it presents some interesting challenges. But today, random side project, headed over to another friend's place who needs some help clearing out some uh, mini bike and motorcycle parts and stuff like that. So I'm gonna meet up with both of them. And I've got a bunch of footage from the last few days and whatnot, so I think we're just gonna roll with that. I was thinking about saving the footage of getting the truck ready and towing it out to Idaho for its own video, but once again, it's been almost a week and I haven't published anything. So we'll just do a classic vlog as it were with a bunch of random stuff. So anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoy. And I'm gonna get out of this neighborhood. This is kind of sketch. <laughs> This thing's still got a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, yeah. Do you want to pop the air cleaner and see if the accelerator pump's doing anything? Or see if we got fuel? Fancy. I got that at a garage sale for five bucks. Nice. Let's put that here in front of the tire. I don't even know if that fuel pump's doing anything, you know? Uh, I saw it looked like one little squirt. Maybe it was just a reflection. When's the last time this was started? Eight months? For longer, last oh. summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, the fuel system could just be dry. Slash, I'm assuming there's fuel in it. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, it parked here, so. Do you want... Cheater fluid? Charging. <laughs> fluid? Yes. Just a tiny bit to check our spark. <laughs> Just enough to make sure we got spark and all that. Seems like it should have popped or tried or something. Yeah. Um. Um. 
Nothing. Yeah, nothing at all. I think we need to get that mechanical pump primed somehow with some vacuum or whatever. By the way, my friend does a lot of work with various youth organizations and whatnot. So that's one of the reasons this truck exists. It It is not designed to do any sort of off-roading in any capacity. It's actually 100% street legal in Oregon. Now we're gonna have to change a few things in Idaho, but uh, yeah, that's why you see license plates and headlights and everything on it. This thing is A-OK -okay to drive on Oregon streets for some reason. It's kind of the wild west out here when it comes to DMV and lack of vehicle inspections and things like that, but um, yeah. So anyways, this thing is uh, just kind of used for some parades and hay rides and stuff like that. And there's a couple other things later in the video you'll see that go along with that as well. So anyways, brief explanation. That gas looks a different color than normal. Yeah. Looks more diesel flavored. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey! It did something. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Just did a parts run. What? We just did a parts run. Oh, nice. I think our mechanical fuel pump might be cranky. What do you think? Should we pull that out ho output hose from the pump and see if we can get it going or? See if it's even doing anything. Yeah, we could. There's about like 10 feet of fuel line or something. I don't know. Go out because they don't have a gas gauge. So I would bet you that it's always full. Yeah. Is where I would typically leave it. But. Yeah. It pumped out what you put in there and now nothing else is going in. In theory, now if the pump is good, it should just start. <laughs> We're still cooling in this thing. Yeah, a little bit. Wouldn't hurt to top it off. Nothing but the finest. There we go. Spring out. Sounds good. We're still running the original, new, used, bad power steering pump from Baxter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> rest, old rusty. Yep. Still works better than the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Idles. Little fuel leak on the top. Oh, on the carb? Yeah, where it goes into the carburetor. Oh, the hose? Yeah, the hose are yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just cut the end off and. I think we need to cut the hole. <laughs> cut the hole I didn't notice it looked like there was a bit of mold on them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe try AutoZone this time? <laughs> yeah, anywhere but there. Do we seriously not have fuel lines laying around anymore? I guess probably not. There's. Feel dripping on the headers. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> these little puffs of <laughs> puffs of smoke. You day smoke. Yeah, my '82 Toyota with the V8, and I, I had the Holly gas fountain happen once, and the fuel was pooling on the intake, and it started like boiling off. I was just like, oh, <laughs> do I run away or try and dry it up? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, new new fuel lines are in order. Perfect. Were those what were those before? What? What were they before? This? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are those off of some other truck? No, they're. they're or you just uh, had them in stock forever? Yeah. <laughs> the one side we installed. These ones. Oh. 
These ones we picked up from Dan, that guy in Vancouver. Oh yeah. Like, kind of reminds you of uh, um, Camacho. Yes. <laughs> so, like workout room and basement. And yep. Yeah. That you contact if the world ends. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we know who to contact. Yeah, I'll sit right there. Um, so what are we figuring for six inches of wheel overhang? Six. Okay. How wide are the tires? Sixteen. Excellent. Solid, <laughs> More than half. A solid nine inches on the... Uh, all right, do you want to... So do you care about this, Dan? This is... Yeah, we get to look baseline. Forty-six and three quarters. Okay. And on our overload... We got one, one thumb one width. One thumb width, excellent. And the back's I touching. I can eyeball that and the back's touching. I'm just yeah. gonna stay in Dune Tech. <laughs> okay. I think. Uh. <laughs> and then 46 okay, and three quarters. Can you climb the hill? Yeah, you can, you can climb the hill. Like, or just make right sure stand there. up there, yeah. <laughs> so you can yell at me and I can yell at him. <laughs> I don't know what kind of force is going to be applied to these wheels when you try to drive over half of them. So, I mean, if the tire is completely covering it, it should be fine. The tire, I mean, it'll be like barely on. It, you know, it's going to. So it's going to be kind of forcing out. Forcing out. Whereas if we put this up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can probably go with uh, go with using the hill. Yeah, I mean, leveler might be better. I mean, even that much makes a pretty decent difference. Don't you think? Yeah. And the other op... Yeah. I just don't know if it's gonna try and push those tires off the wheels or something, you know? In yeah. any of Because you're driving over the inside edge. I mean... I just think that leveler might be... Easier. Easier, so... Uh, All right. Are you recording the solder? Of course. <laughs> recording everything, always. <laughs> and we don't have a parking brake. Perfect. We only have to tilt like four inches Sweet. or just drive it on. <laughs> 47 and three quarters. Doing this hand free. You might have to. Okay, straight forward. Looking good. Looking good. Hold, hold it just one second. Let me look through the back. Yeah, we're good in the back too. Yeah, yeah, good both sides. The back's lined up good. Tiny bit to your right. There you go. Okay. Got 
not about yay much on those back tires, so. I feel like we have almost no extra weight. It's 46 and three quarters. We dropped an inch. One inch. <laughs> huh. How's our overload looking? Um, three quarters of one thumb. <laughs> huh. So I guess the back's heavier than we thought. So what does that mean that, that we dropped an inch on the front? It means there's almost no load on this. And you want load on it? Maybe a little bit. So that it's... The way it was bouncing as you pulled on for the last little bit seemed not light in the front, but... Insignificant. Almost too insignificant. Right. Um, so... How about some ballast in the front? Cement. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would like it, like if we could go forward, like uh, another foot and a half, maybe. But it might be okay. I don't know. So. I mean, we're definitely, we're definitely on here pretty right on square. Isn't it, Dan? Yeah, like the back's lined up pretty good with the front. We're maybe ever so slightly to the uh, driver's side, uh -huh. but everything is perfectly square, front and back. Are we able to hop out and look, or do we trust the low range in gear? Something. Oh yeah, we could take pictures. Slash, now you're an extra seven feet off the ground. Yeah, we could take pictures of both sides. <laughs> Don't roll your ankle. <laughs> no, we're definitely shifted this way just a little bit. Yeah, see, I think we could go about three inches over here, maybe. Yeah. So it seems to me like, Dan, if we left the front tires on, pulling forward, they're half on and half off. I think that that's probably yeah. close enough. The back tires, we only have like four inches. To the other tires? Uh, just yeah. the tire to the metal. Oh. Uh, I mean, we could shift it over, you know, when we put it back on. Five inches, so... Well, this side's like 10 inches, so... Oh, is it? Yeah, so... Oh, okay. That, I, what I'm thinking, Dan, is... And I think you can even Google that. Pull the back Google tires off. You have to have put on little rollers. Rollers, so you can get closer. And then I can pull this all the way forward, and then we just get... Yes, yeah. Then we get 2,000 pounds of tongue weight rather than... Because, like, I, I, like I said, I really want, like, another foot and a half, at least. I, I so, so I think we have to pull the rear tires, okay. pull the spacers, throw some rollers on. And we have some that'll go on there? Uh, Evan has some, or, or uh, those uh, those white ones would. Oh, but the trailer tires? Our, our, spare, <laughs> our spare tires. Our spare tires. <laughs> so you're traveling and you have a plug, yeah. and then you take the tires off oh, of the truck. So <laughs> Keep forgetting they're a thousand pounds. Oh, wait, plus the wheels. Yeah. Uh, only 1,100 five. pounds each. <laughs> six and five or six each. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, five or six. Um, so pull it off? Sure. And then make it look awesome. Yep. <laughs> you have to keep at least two of the big tires on for the trip. It'll at least be obvious it's a monster truck and not a Feig mobile. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will admit though, the exhaust is not nearly loud enough for this thing. When they don't have a jack stand and you just took a tire off, you're like, it's like, you're, it's only like a little ways. Yeah, if I post this clip to the internet, everyone's gonna get upset if they don't see a jack stand in frame. It's funnier if it doesn't have. <laughs> you should put it under this. Put it yeah, under it's pretty much <laughs> See, jack stand. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a dining room chair. <laughs> it's at just the right height. <laughs> I think this better. <laughs> uh, you need to be smoking pipes. I know, right? While we're doing this. Because <laughs> you're supposed to put the jack stand into the part that you're unbolting, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you're supposed to do. 
<laughs> now see how the hub sticks through the middle? That's stock stuff okay. for that axle. No, this is this is a dual. It's a uh, this is an aftermarket dually spacer. So if you've got oh, it is. Yeah, if you've got the wrong axle and you want to add a dually to it. You'd, oh, you take that you off. Buy one of, you buy one of these and you install this. So this is an aftermarket for the front, probably. Aftermarket for a stock-ish setup. Yeah. Oh, this is like I don't have a dually axle, but now I do. Yeah, exactly. Yep, I, I bought these uh, and spacers for my suburban, and I want to put dualies on a suburban, but I just have the regular axle. And it's yeah. just a, it's just a, uh, you know, it's ten bolt. <laughs> ten bolt. <laughs> Side to way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then we get to do it again on the other side. Let's see what we're yeah. doing in here. That's so stupid. Yeah, we're only like a quarter of the way done here. <laughs> what are you doing? We have to do this. Just out of Take off the Jimmy spacer. Told us to do. Oh, yeah. whatever he, whatever he said. Yeah. yeah. He told us to Jimmy's pull like, these. Here we need to do this thing. And we're like, and it sounds easy. It sounds easy. Oh, uh, it's super easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really it's not hard. It's just. I guess you could take it out of gear and turn that thing or something. <laughs> just fire it up. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> that <laughs> is island. amazing. We're gonna take eight of these off a quarter turn at a time. And then... On each side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. For these spacers, you usually could use a, a wrench or an impact gun. Not today. Put that one. Just do it down there. <laughs> ah! Freebie! <sighs> now our jack stand's in the way. <sighs> Alright, clear out. <laughs> <laughs> probably isn't the best spot to be. Party. This is going to be... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that is real. Yes. Oh. Speaking of impact, Jimmy, you don't even have impact. <laughs> I can't wait till I get the other side done. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's that. Yep. Sam, you may want to uh, the rollover zone. Right <laughs> in the show. Lexi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just trying Let's to just make it 20% harder. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, not quite as egregious as I thought. I mean, it's still blatantly obvious that there's something going on and it's just being transported. <laughs> Although, <laughs> do you think burnouts will help those? Uh... <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, outside of the tire. Let's see how much the tape measure lies today. Oh, it's such a liar. 80, 82. 80, isn't that how wide the trailer is? I think it's some amount wide. <laughs> no, I'm, ta I'm talking like. Yeah, we're in the same spot. Overall width, maximum widest point. 82 is the number. Okay. okay. Where'd that trailer go? I think it's in the backyard now. Yeah. Maybe I should take the engine out of that Cougar and put it in my van. Is there an engine in there? It's like brand new. This one houses all of the finest 351. There's a Tremec T5. Uh, uh, there's a nice hole cut in here. I hope there's no air cleaner so that the water can get uh, nah. straight. That's the Cleveland, Cleveland Big Valve 351. Who's, who's uh, purview is this one? I'm John. John. Johan. John's uh, got both ends of the Spectre. Like, wow. The, the high end. <laughs> What's your plan? Because you probably have one. 
near their two by sixes or that aluminum thing. Oh, those are better. Oh yeah, we got ramps. No problem. Is this oh. is this a ramp? One ramp. Is it wide enough? No. Uh, I guess not. Same thing with the other tire. That doesn't even feel very strong. It doesn't sound very strong. 44. No. Nope. And it's not very strong. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think last time we used that was towing it behind Those Dune Tech dry as in the parade down here in Multnomah yeah. Village. It's fine. Yeah. You just look at these put this you put this handle on it. What's going on over here? This is a crusty timber you got for this. So you put this on the front, and then you have Nathan pull the kids around. <laughs> yeah. Those look a little moldy. Nathan, pull the kids down the hill with the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Not only it's so it's a farm right, tool, so the front axle is fixed and it just rotates. Oh, that doesn't have steering. Can we stage oh, that real quick, Sam, so I can get a picture for you from the show of you? I like this. There's the handle and the hitch, both mounted to timbers. One of them you pull with a vehicle. How often do you see a two-inch ball on a piece of wood? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure someone else on Earth has done it at some point. It's been done somewhere else. <laughs> Well, it's just uh... <laughs> uh, Do we need to move Yacht Club or John's truck or both? Oh, oh it does steer. Oh, yeah. The whole front just rotates. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's do we need more people on the front, perhaps? Be too careful. <laughs> she goes. I'm just just let just let her go. The cougar will stop it. Maybe <laughs> someday. Are you just trying wow. to split firewood here? <laughs> yeah. That was the old uh, David Bowie. I don't think that one's gonna work. Uh, you need some yeah. Rats. You need some rats. Can we get some saw horses we can oh, stick man. under there? <laughs> so interesting note, just as an experiment and also because I'm exquisitely lazy, I haven't had any coffee for the last couple days and I've had to use my rescue inhaler well, way more than I normally do, which is typically almost never. So, yeah. Caffeine. It helps the breathing, apparently. Um, the doctor told me that a long time ago, and I have noticed that it seems to help, but uh, just one of those things that I inadvertently tried it, and, um, well, it had negative effects not drinking coffee. <laughs> so, there you go. Caffeine tolerance for the win. And, yes, I'm in a McDonald's drive through right now getting some coffee, because <laughs> where else would I be? <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have been so awkward. <laughs> yeah. It would have been like, yeah, I come outside and just dead ass staring him in the face. And like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you? <laughs> oh yeah, this has all the things you could need. Oh, well, it took me to do this. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Dan, do we want to try and find? This is probably too too much. We found a chunk of hose and a knife. Oh, uh, we can do that later. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here to keep things from being too professional. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Uh, Dear Lord, you guys did amazing. See you don't here. want this clip? Yeah, there we go. You don't want this? 
We want all of it. I, I'm, I'm keeping all, all this is mine. This like, this isn't screwing. No, I, I know, but we can clamp it and try it. That's yeah. total mini bike parts. <laughs> See, stuff like this here is what you can't find. Like the little brake lever return spring things. Like, yeah. having this is like super uh, handy. And there's tons of stuff like that in here. Is this for boats? Or mini bikes? You're for boats. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be an awfully small boat, but uh, I think I would imagine that being for like vertical blinds inside. Yeah, there are a bunch of them. <laughs> It'd be a boat that uses this little spark plug. Yeah. I do enjoy the Harbor Freight stuff though sometimes because they're not quite the right size, but it comes in handy for like old worn out stuff that the bolt isn't the right size anymore. So then you have something that fits. I like it. Just take. The icing on the cake, man. All right, lay down. Lay down. It was super, super lay down. Lift down your there you go. ass. I just wanted it not in my way. You're very trusting. Look your little feet there. Do, 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 do. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're missing a few bolts, and we're missing the one knob. So again, I don't know if it was something like this. Should I go find another one of these that has... The knob, other than that, I think we're pretty, like, yeah, pretty. Rolling. I feel like I've seen knobs like that at Ace Hardware and stuff. Oh, they're, they're in the piles over here. Oh, they are? Oh. Hey, man. Congrats. Okay. One down, some amount to go. I feel like I saw some clamps. Oh, there's some. Oh, here's a. So these, this is like, this is our spare. The old style? This is our spare nut thing that we need. So this oh, okay, one, like, you. would, you know, I can throw this over next to this yeah. pile and that basically gets us zip tie that on there that gets us an extra nut for that thing cool so we've got these are 50 cc mm -hmm. exhaust so i got two of those and then this one would fit the other z50 that i have oh are these blue forks here the style uh, that we we're looking for or? these ones are for the old one. Oh, okay. This is now again. I think anything would work for anything. Yeah. But this, like, I mean, it seems a little bit less crusty, maybe yeah. than that. So some of these are just like ten percent different. So I would just, I've got a fork that works, and I would like take that one also. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, okay. I don't know. That that's kind of close enough. <laughs> you know, kind of what I'm. Yeah, I, I would probably keep those just because they're probably going to go in the bin and they're still usable. Okay. Just minimal treatment. Yep. <laughs> This is kind of a party, but I think that that's again just we got knobs a, and stuff. Kind of so. a spare. So, oh, here's, so oh, these, we found the axle bolts. These spacers are okay. Needed for a couple of these systems, like this gas tank. Yeah, it looks like something. Got a hammer. <laughs> hammer and some PV blaster, huh? Oh, this one's already been used as a hammer. You can see all the bolt punch outs on it. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been, I was uh, Oh, that was the previous hammer? I was, yeah, I was, I was running that pretty hard the other day. <laughs> These wheels, like all of the... They're probably this? just seized up, yeah. <laughs> Wondering around circles for like, yeah. we're like, I don't know where to start. You just need someone to point at something every so often. <laughs> What's the saying? A cross thread's a strong thread. A strong thread. What about a pounded? <laughs> yeah, no threads, just no mashed. No threads, in, mashed into rust. <laughs> this one's like 68, mm -hmm. maybe, or something like that. No brake lever on, this, this is the hard, this is the hard tail. Oh, okay. So this is a hard tail, so the hard tails are like. How do the brakes even work? Hand, two hand brakes. Oh, okay. So uh, rear and front brake on 69. Oh, they got the lever. You get a rear brake lever. Yeah. The, but this is still a hardtail frame also. So the question is, are we going to use an entire can of that nut, nut buster this week? Between <laughs> I, Dune Tech and all this? I thought about bringing, buying a second can at Home Depot today. <laughs> I think this week has used more of that than ever before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do on these vintage... <laughs> <laughs> 
the guys on the forum having a heart attack. <laughs> Pounding on a 68, a one-off 68 wow. Z50. It's not hardwood. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, uh, giddy giddy. Yeah, so this house is being renovated and repainted and everything. And um, all this stuff needs to go. So, um, mini bikes. Is that one ready for the outbox? I think so. Oh, I guess there's seat bolts. Or was that the one where they didn't fit in there? Pounded. <laughs> Excellent. Pounded one in there. Yeah, as long as they're not super rusty. <laughs> Some of it. Just throw these in the pile. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yeah, these two red ones and that blue one you just brought over look pretty decent. So I knew there was a lot of 60s and 70s mini bike stuff here, but until we started pulling all this stuff out, I didn't quite realize the magnitude of how much there actually is. Um, and there's still a bunch more over there too. Um, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> So we got all the mini bike parts and we're headed back to the plantation now and gonna load everything into the back of the giant truck, which we refer to as Dune Tech. And then Saturday, um, it's all gonna head out to Idaho. Still not sure if I'm headed out there yet or not, but we shall see. So yeah, mini bike stuff, yay. All right, so this little red wagon trailer thing was built dozens of years ago, and it's been used for various events and parades and stuff like that. But as you can see, the wood on it is a little bit rotten, and since the back of the Ford is now filled with mini bike parts, we're going to basically cut all this off. We made measurements, set up a pattern, and we're just gonna take the hay cart axles and all of the mounting underneath there out to Idaho and then rebuild everything once we get there. I think it's gonna be the easiest way to deal with it because, uh, well, yeah, it's a giant thing. With it all cut apart, the axles and stuff should fit underneath the big truck called Dune Tech on the trailer. So anyways, uh, yeah, there you go. Cutting stuff apart with a skill saw. Are these just sandwiched two by sixes? Yeah, with a six by six in the middle. Huh. Yeah, some of these are square drive, weird. Guess I'll have to use the magnet sweeper. Yay. Yeah, see, now it'll be easy to get to those bolts. Okay. It'll do. Load it up. <laughs> Still smells piney and fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now for the final part of the evening, we get to take all of that stuff from the trailer that we cut up down to a local dumpster, which we do own. <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna drag that thing out to Idaho and rebuild it there or something like that. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna head out. It'll be good to do another road trip, I think. <laughs> 